Today we have a female swimmer, gymnast, and crossfitter. She medaled at the Pan Pacific Junior Games in Sydney a few years back. <laughs> she got a few medals. She didn't want to tell me exactly how many, but there was a couple. Uh, she's a state and national competitor for gymnastics. She owns her own gymnastics academy in the Shire called Shire Gymnastics. <laughs> and she is a co-owner owner of CrossFit Kiriwi down in Cronulla, Cronulla Way. Wait, is it just Kiriwi? In the Shire too. In the Shire as well, okay. <laughs> and she is a competitor at the National Championships in gymnastics. She came 17th in the 2019 CrossFit Open in Australia. And she's competed twice on teams with CrossFit Kiriwi at the latest sanctionals. You can find her on Instagram at Meg underscore Cox. Meg Cox, soon to be Meg Davies. Welcome on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Did I miss any big parts there in the intro? No, I think you crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting more and more. I think, I feel like they're getting more and more difficult for me to do. I don't know why. Um, the first ones I nailed and then the last couple I've been struggling a little bit too. <laughs> but anyway. Meg, why do female gymnasts have such strong legs and male gymnasts wear big pants? <laughs> it's a valid question. Um, I think because most of the girls' apparatus require them to have more leg power versus upper body strength, whereas the boys' apparatus need their lower bodies to be light. So like when they're doing like the cross on the rings, you don't want to have big heavy legs. That makes sense. Yeah, whereas girls need to like leap. Oh, and, so like, most the, like, of the, the female... Split apparatus this is more floor based or power off the floor yeah power and then off the, the floor and the beam and the vault whereas we only have bars is the only hanging apparatus whereas the men have a lot yeah so that's but upper body on the bar though it would be beneficial to have lighter legs yeah as a female yeah not well, not really yeah it doesn't really matter too much but i think like for three out of the four apparatus you need to have strong legs that's why girls usually have more jacked lower bodies than the boys <laughs> <laughs> okay that makes sense yeah when did you get into gymnastics? Because everything I hear is people getting into it at a very, very young age. Was it the same for you? Uh, yeah. So I did just like recreational classes when I was four. And then my brother actually got selected to go into like a competitive program when he was six. And so I just kind of tagged along with him. And then um, from there, I got selected into the competitive program when I was five. So wow. I started when I was five. <laughs> Did you have any idea what you were getting into or was it just a thing that your parents kind of said, this is what you're doing? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. It was my mom that was <laughs> pushing it. Cause like when they were growing up, both my mom and my dad didn't really have um, like a lot of extra activities cause their parents weren't very wealthy. So I think like for my brother and I, our parents were always kind of wanting to push us into anything else that was like yeah. <laughs> deemed exciting I guess so we did a lot of sport and music and all that sort of stuff like whatever we wanted to do our parents would take us so we both liked gymnastics and that's kind of where it started oh okay so you did quite a few different sports but mm -hmm. both of you were attracted to gymnastics mm -hmm. okay when did you feel like you were uh, getting good at it um when I was about eight I was like that was like what I call my peak that sounds terrible <laughs> <laughs> I've been eight years old and hitting your peak but um like that was just like when your body is the lightest and the strongest because like then for a female as you start maturing and you get lady bits, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> um, like gymnastics has become harder. So like around eight, I was like, man, I'm crushing this. Yeah. And then. um. So you, your yeah. strength to body weight ratio is really good at good. eight? Around about eight, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then um, you grow. How heavy are you at eight, roughly? <laughs> uh, about 20 kilos. Wow. <laughs> 25. That's crazy. Do you know any... Are there any stuff that you did back then that you look at now? You're like, oh, there's no way I can do that. Well, you I do try some and stuff. I try some things now because like the kids I coach are about eight to twelve years old, and I try and demonstrate things and I can't do it, <laughs> and they just laugh at me. And I'm like, I'm really heavy, like I can't. <laughs> um, what are some examples? 
Um, like a lot of tumbling on floor. I'm okay. very slow now compared to when I was little. Um, bars, like I can still do giants and stuff, but some of the other things I'm too heavy. Yeah. <laughs> like a clip to handstand is really hard. Like I, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, but it, like you swing around the bar and end up in a handstand, but you're close to the bar, not far away. Yeah. So a giant, you're stretching away, but a clear hip, you're like nice and close. Holy I can't do cow. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm too slow. Well, I can definitely not do it. So if that's any <laughs> did you compete? Kind of straight off the bat then at eight? Uh, or how does, the, how does it work when you get into g- competitive gymnastics? I mean, it differs from club to club that you're at. But generally, um, like when you start, you want to start as young as you can. But you have to be six to start competing. And like generally you'll start in level one. And then every year you kind of work your way up through to level 10. Um, but there's also pathways where you can go like international if you wanted to do um, like basically the Olympic stream. So once you reach level 10, you can go into juniors or seniors, which is the elite level. Mm. Um, but yeah, so most people just go level one to 10 and then either just keep repeating level 10 or move on or retire. How do you know that you're a level nine or a level 10? So there's like set um, routines that you have to do. So if you can't do those skills, you can't be in that level basically, but you also have to like pass a level to keep moving up. But um, so like you might have a gymnast that did level one, and is really amazing. And then they can skip to like level four. But you still oh, wow. have to, yeah, like you have to be able to um, perform certain those. Movements? Yeah, you have to be able to perform those skills. Yeah. To kind of keep moving. <laughs> what level is a ring muscle up? Um, well, girls don't do that. We don't oh, do rings. Right. Yeah. But the boys have it, I think, in about level three or four. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So quite quite young. <laughs> That's why I always giggle at crossfitters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and theirs is completely strict. Like they don't have any swinging muscle yeah. ups. Which a lot of crossfitters can't really do. Yeah. Yeah. That too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are some of the biggest lessons that you learned at that age doing competitive, competitive gymnastics? Um, a lot of it was to do with respect, like for myself, well, my body, myself, my coaches, um, discipline in the way of like patience, I guess, because like in competitive gymnastics, you never really could achieve anything straight away. Like it always took a really long time mm. developing all your skills and stuff. So patience and... I don't know. Can't even think of what else. There's so many, so many like life lessons. Like even like learning how to like schedule my time for studying when I was older because you're at gymnastics 20 hours a week and you had to like figure out where, when am I going to eat? When am I going to sleep? When am I going to do my schoolwork? And Mm. not that I was very bright at school, but (laughs) I still had to plan it in somehow. So I didn't end up even more stupid. (laughs) (laughs) But that's a massive amount of hours in between all of that, right? That yeah. you, Cause you're doing all the training, you're doing all your school. Did you, do you feel like you didn't really have time to do anything else? Um, I think at the time, like when I kind of reached around 13, I really wanted a social life, like, cause all my friends were going to parties and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And I was like, oh, sorry, I can't, I've got training. But at the same time, like the people that I was, had the most in common with were people at swimming and gymnastics. Like they were doing the things that I was interested in. So I wanted to spend my time with them Mm. and I couldn't spend time with them unless I was at training because they were at training too. So (laughs) it ended up being okay. Like I wasn't really, I didn't have a big group of friends outside of my sport. Like even at school, like I didn't really have many Mm. friends that I was like, oh yeah, keeps keen. (laughs) It's kind of like what we're at like now. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All your friends are at the gym. Exactly. Um, So you, so you started gymnastics at four or five and then like you said, you started another sport that requires hours and hours of training, which is swimming. Mm-hmm. When did you get into that? Um, I was about the same age. So oh, I was wow. doing, yeah, I was doing learn to swim up until I was like five and they asked me to go into squad training. And um, so that was early mornings. And I still remember like when I was, I think I was like five or six, my first morning wake up that I had to get up for like a 4.30 session. And my dad came into my room and I was like, I can't. <laughs> and I just started crying. I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> but then like, obviously from then it worked somehow. So I think because I had swimming in the morning and gymnastics at night, those two sports kind of worked together because they never really clashed. Mm. And also for the fact that they're like, I wasn't getting injuries from one that would prevent me doing the other one because it like say for instance if um girls are doing netball with gymnastics they get mm. a lot of knee injuries or ankle injuries which prevents them training to their full potential at gymnastics but mm. with swimming i never really got any injuries that kind of took me away from either sport yeah yeah so they just worked well together but did you train mornings and evenings every day of the week <laughs> i trained every morning except for sundays in swimming so monday to saturday and then gymnastics i trained Four afternoons a week. Oh, sorry. Three afternoons a week and one Saturday for like all day. Crazy. Yeah. It's so funny. 
everyone has a different impression of what it means to train a lot. Mm-mm. And some people think it's a lot to train three times, three hours a week, right? Mm-mm. Three times, one hour a session. But that's, yeah, that's incredible. Did you feel run down at any point at that age at all? Or is it, do you just have so much energy when you're a kid? Um, so. Yeah, I didn't really hit a burnout at any point. I think like with the way that like my parents were um, like feeding me and making sure I was on bed and in bed. Uh, in bed on time, there we go, um, and all that sort of stuff. Like it kind of worked really well, like for what I was doing, and like they knew the volume that, like of the training that I was doing, that it you need to eat extra food, and like my parents are pretty good mm. with nutrition, so I never really had. It's not that they like didn't let me have cake and stuff, but <laughs> like they were making sure that I was eating heaps of protein and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Like even from a young age, so I don't know. I think it just worked for me. I never really hit a burnout. I guess in a way. <laughs> What you're mentioning there with the food, though, you did pick a sport with gymnastics where the body weight was important, right? Can you, d- did you guys get weight at training or was there anything like that? Did you have to keep an eye on what you ate and not too much candy or? Um, I didn't really have an issue until I was like a little bit older, but like the coach I had at the time, um, he was always a bit picky with like his gymnast. He would always look at your parents and see if they were overweight. And oh, then wow. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not kidding. It was, it was pretty full on back in, back in the day. It's a bit better now, but, um, yeah. So like he would like look at your parents and if your parents are overweight, he would be like, oh no, you can't do this program or like you need to start watching what you eat. But I never really had a problem with that. Like my parents are both, they still are sporty, very, yeah. yeah, they're very fit still. <laughs> mm. Um, I think my dad's nearly 70 and he's still doing CrossFit and stuff now. Yeah. So it's pretty funny. Um, but yes, yeah, so I think for like when I was going through gym, it wasn't really a massive problem with um like them telling we telling us we were overweight or anything but it's more to do with like how strong you versus your weight so like if you weighed 40 kilos you needed to be strong enough to lift that 40 kilos Mm. through all your exercise so really it was to do with your strength as opposed to how much you actually weighed yeah yeah so not not too much pressure with like what you yeah yeah what you had to eat or anything except as long as you were strong enough exactly exactly yeah as long as you could perform basically yeah did you have any favorite exercises or anything that stood out to you between the swimming and the gymnastics and or did you just enjoy all of it um i love doing butterfly at swimming that sounds really oh, yeah. funny because everyone hates butterfly but i think that was the reason i liked it because it was like the hardest stroke and i just i don't know i found it relaxing in a way <laughs> and like i i would like finish and be like oh man i crushed that <laughs> <laughs> i've never heard anyone describe that stroke as relaxing <laughs> yeah but it was to me like yeah. it was just like the rhythm of it like i just i used to just close my eyes when i was swimming and i was like oh, I, I just loved it oh wow what distance um i used to do sprinting for yeah. swimming so is that 50 or 100 yeah or? 50 and 100 um i did some 200s but that starts getting long distance to me so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I yeah. don't. I don't really like going long distances. <laughs> Still, more than I'm, a, I'm a sprinter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're definitely getting better at it, though. I'm, oh, sure. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, um, are there any uh, competitions, either in swimming or gymnastics, through those teens that stands out to you that you really remember for any reason, or um, any stories from those? I mean, all of my swimming comps were always really important. Like the high level ones were really important to me, uh, mostly because of. Um, like the coaches are surrounded with, like they always put everything in to me, uh, like other people too, but like they really focused and made sure that I was achieving everything I wanted to. And like, they really laid out all my um, goals and stuff. And so when I achieved them at any comp, it was just like, that was just super important to me that I had Mm. a role model from a young age that kind of like guided me to where I wanted to be. And that's kind of what made me want to coach as well. So I think for me, like my biggest achievement was hitting my goals, but I only achieved them through my coach. Yeah. Who um, was your coach? I had a few different swimming coaches, but my uh, main one was Thomas. He was um, from the Czech Republic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But um, he was living in Australia. Um, he's still in Australia now, but um, he was my coach for about 10 years and he was just, I don't know, he was the reason I wanted to coach. Yeah. What he type just, of personality was he? Like what t- style of coach? Um, he was strict, but funny. Like he always like crack jokes and stuff, especially at five o'clock in the morning, nobody wants to get in a swimming pool. So, mm. um, he was good. Um, I don't know, to kind of make you feel like you needed to train hard, but you could also have fun Yeah, and like still achieve what you wanted to achieve and all that sort of stuff. So what did the session look like kind of roughly? 
uh, warm five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, warm ups are probably like about a five hundred meter cruisy warm up, and then you would do like what stroke? It'd be like freestyle, backstroke, okay. nothing too hard. Um, and then you'd probably have like four or five parts of it, depending on what season you're in. So like the in swimming, there's a sprint season and a long distance season. So okay. in sprint season, you'd obviously be working like 25 meters, 50 meters and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you'd have like four different parts working, whatever strokes you're working on. And, and would you race teammates? Um, yeah, not every lesson, but you would have to, <laughs> right. My, I trained with my brother, so I always used yeah. him as <laughs> someone that I had to beat. So, yeah. Um, Did you ever beat him? All the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Except okay. for in pressure. I couldn't do pressure to save my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I think with that, that was probably something that stuck out the most. But in gymnastics, I think like the last comp that I ever did before I retired yeah. <laughs> at the age of like whatever I was, 14 or 15, <laughs> um, it was at a national event and it was just like the last time that I was with my team and that was just like super special because we ended up winning overall as a team. And um, like What was your team? It was from my old club. So like yeah. you, like you, it's club based and... Um, Which club was it? I was at New South Wales Academy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was where my competitor is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think like for me, that was like the last special thing that sticks in my mind. Like we were in Canberra and we won and... I think like it was a nice way to retire on a high note. <laughs> Did you know that going into that, that you were retiring? That was your last yeah, event? Yeah. yeah. So oh, mad. yeah, I, um, I had a couple of like knee issues and my back was getting pretty bad. Um, like with like the impact and stuff at gymnastics, mm. but, um, I always had to make a decision because, um, my swimming coach wanted me to go more hours and my gymnastics coach wanted me to do more hours. So I had mm. to pick a sport. And um, for me, at the time, I was way better at swimming. So yeah. I picked swimming. I also enjoyed swimming a little bit more because it was um, like socially, like the people at, in my swim team were I was more friends with as opposed to like my gymnastics team. But um, yeah, mm. I picked swimming. So I knew that that was my last comp. And it was just, wow. I think I actually performed well because I wasn't stressed. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't like, oh my God, I need to do well. So yeah. it It's crazy being... that you, the way you talk about that time, like having to make that decision, you know, you're back, you starting to get back injuries and stuff and you're 14. Mm. Is that nuts to look back at now? Um, I think when I was 14, I didn't do anything. I, like, <laughs> yeah, I was just running around <laughs> going crazy. Yeah. I think like being in an elite sport like gymnastics, like your, your bodies develop differently to normal teenagers and um, mm. like just general sports. Like if you're doing soccer or mm. anything like that, like, you train once a week, play a game once a week, and you do that for the winter season. Like that's that's yeah. all your sport is. But with gymnastics, it's full time. Like even during the school holidays, you don't have a break. Like you're training every single, well, four days out of the week, every week. So I think like obviously injury rates higher, um, mm. but the also skill level is skill, way yeah. higher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the skills that you're performing require you to have your body trained mm. in a certain way. So. I think like it's not necessarily that like a normal 14 year old can't do that. But if you didn't start it when you're younger, like it's hard to like just whip out a yeah. flip or whatever you want, like your body needs to be more prepared for it. But um, like back injuries and stuff, any injuries in gymnastics weren't really um, studied too much like back when I was doing gym, but like mm. now it's starting to get better. There's a lot more um, information and stuff on how to prevent those things and the way that we're training kids and obviously like the apparatus now have um, changed a little they've bit. They've changed. Yeah. yeah. So mm. like the floor and the vault is a lot softer. So it, mm. well, it's springier, but it's softer to land on. So like the impact isn't as heavy as opposed to back in the day when I was competing, we used to actually vault on the pommel horse oh. without the handle. So it was really rigid and like you would hit the <laughs> vault and holy moly, like your spine would just oh. shatter as you were hitting it. <laughs> But, um, cause they've changed the actual apparatus now. Yeah. yeah Not yeah. just the flooring or anything. It's, it looks different yeah. and it's, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like, so did you go upgraded. through that transition when they changed yeah, it? Yeah. My last two years of gymnastics, that's when they started to, um, change things. But even now, like, I mean, Simone Biles is amazing, but like the things that she can do is because the apparatus has changed. Like, I think she still would have mm. been amazing 20 years ago. Yeah. Like she's phenom phenomenal, but the apparatus wasn't allowing certain skills to be performed because of mm. like either um, like how, how high you could go off it or like 
how unsafe the landing would be. Yeah, and I guess she's gone through that training history of being on that apparatus, yep. right? Whereas your training history was through that older apparatus. Yep. So that's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I think like it, it's kind of with every sport, like everything adapts and grows. So obviously people get better as time goes on because mm. the equipment's changing, but also like um, people are learning how to adapt their training um, to prevent injuries and to prolong people's careers. So I think like back in the day when I did gym, <laughs> retiring at 15 was normal. Yeah. But now like majority of the um, Australian team is 20 to 25 years old. Which is old, eh? Which is old. <laughs> like for gymnastics it yeah. is. Yeah. So. It's crazy. Yeah, it how, is. It's getting better. How old is Simone? Um, she's only young. I think she's only like maybe 18, oh, 17. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And she's a solid 5'2", I think. Yeah, she's so small. 4'8", or she's maybe? Like, she's like Amy Alessi. <laughs> <laughs> I think That's Amy's way jacked. taller than her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask, what was your favorite apparatus? So um, when you went into Canberra for that last event at 14, what was your favorite then and how did you go? Even though I was just talking about how bad it was, but Vault was my favorite because mm. I like that explosive, short, sharp um, Routine. I, I was, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, it suited my body type. Um, what I did you do on that apparatus? What did I do? Yeah, I don't <laughs> know what the things are called, but are there some flips and stuff? Yeah, I did a piked Sukahara. Okay. <laughs> if you'd like to look that up. <laughs> Probably might, means nothing to you. Might Google that later on. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, what does that involve? Roughly explain it. So you run towards the vault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you jump and turn quarter onto the vault so like a round off so you hit it sideways hit it sideways yeah yep. and as you block off you turn backwards and do a backwards pike salto off onto your feet so when you say pike does that mean that you're straight your body's your legs are straight but you're grabbing your legs and pulling them towards your face oh, like okay, you're okay. a yep. sandwich <laughs> got it okay holy cow yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah gymnastics is kind of the coolest background i have zero skills or any background in it but i wish it's one of the things i wish i did when i was a kid so cool. Okay, back to the swimming. Did you do any big swimming events? Um, yes. Yeah, so, well, I mean, I went to nationals a couple of times. So the biggest one I did was um, the Pan Pacific Games Apex. for juniors. Yeah. Um, it was basically like in, back in the day, it was like the kids mini Olympics or whatever you want to call yeah. it. It was like my first experience of competing against like um, like China and Canada and whatever. Yeah. Whatever countries were there. It was um, for me like to even be up against people from different countries like blew my mind back then. But, um, that w was, were there anyone there that was swimming that became, you know, big in the Olympics later on? Were there any famous swimmers? I'm pretty sure there was, I can't even think of who was there at that year, but I remember, um, not so much it cause this was the junior, but in the senior version of that, that year, that was like when Ian Thorpe and Grant Hackett and all those boys were swimming oh, wow. and they used to come to like the training sessions and stuff. And I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they were already big back then. Yeah, yeah. That, well, that was like their peak year. Like that was just before, um, like the Sydney, oh, Olympics. Sydney Olympics. Yeah. yeah. That's how old I am. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> we gave away that one. Uh, it was in 99, yeah. <laughs> 99. Yeah. 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 What, uh, did you swim butterfly then? Yeah. So I did um, three events for butterfly, two events for freestyle and a relay. And how many medals all up? Four. Four. <laughs> oh, Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you miss swimming? Um, I do. I don't miss waking up and having to wash my hair every morning because that is punishing. Wait. <laughs> Do you have to wash your hair after the swimming? Every time, every oh. morning. I used to have to wash my hair and I hated it. That was honestly the worst part of swimming. It wasn't <laughs> getting up early to swim or like to do the training or being cold or anything like that. It was that I had to wash my hair. It's such a female thing <laughs> is the washing of the hair. How often do you wash your hair? Now? If you can choose, yeah. Once or twice a week. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> is that on a Saturday or... <laughs> Nah, I didn't go out. I don't need to wash my <laughs> hair. Right. Yeah, it's so different when you're a guy. Hey, yeah. you got short hair. You don't, I think, don't about think about it. Think about it. Like I surf every morning yeah. and you jump in the shower. That would be ideal. Yeah. Why is it so painful for girls? Well, if you saw my hair when it was wet and dried naturally, you'd oh, okay. understand why I look like a sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> Does it just go all big and it's, fuzzy? Yeah. I so like when I start blow drying my hair, I look like um 
Sideshow si- Mel or Bob or whatever it is from The Simpsons. Sideshow b- Bob, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Where his hair's like, fl- oh. that's that's what I look like. So, so basically like Amy Alessi does every day. Uh, I would say worse. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I would definitely say worse. <laughs> Strongest hair game in the CrossFit community, <laughs> for sure. Uh, okay, let's uh, switch gears a little bit. When did you discover CrossFit? What was your first CrossFit session? Um, I actually did a session at CrossFit Cronulla when it was in someone's garage. So it was oh, literally, Matt Healy. yeah, Matt Healy's gym. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of my friends, um, had just started and she was like, Oh, I think you'd really like this. Like there's heaps of gymnastic stuff in it. And anyway, so I went and did a fundamental session and, um, pretty much everything in it. I was like, Oh my God, this is the best. And after like a week I was like, yep, this is what I'm going to do. And this was literally in a two car garage. And they were there for like maybe six months until they moved to a bigger one and then just kind of evolved from there. Yeah. Do you remember what appealed to you in the beginning? Were you kind of stepped out of from swimming and gymnastics and I don't know, were you looking for something or? Yeah, like I was, at the time I was just doing like boot camps twice a week and like I hated it. Like mm. for what it was, like the coaches and stuff that ran boot camps weren't really pushing you to achieve anything it was just kind of like oh yep do some fitness okay now you can go eat some pasta like it, there was no <laughs> like there was no goal that was it was just kind of like do you exercise so you can eat mm. whatever meal you want to eat I guess yeah but um I think like when I turned up to CrossFit I like because I'd never weightlifted before and I liked the challenge of learning something new um it's fine <laughs> that's my dog sorry yeah. Roxy's in the background <laughs> I, I don't think the mic will pick it up anyway but if anyone wonders there's a golden retriever in the background. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i think like the weightlifting side of it um i was really interested in like um obviously it was brand new to me and i could see that um or where you could get to like i would look up um youtube videos of weightlifters and there'd be like 16 year old girls <laughs> snatching like 100 kilos i was like what is happening yeah. <laughs> um so i think like that was pretty exciting but also just the fact like all those new movements to me like um even just doing um, butterfly pull-ups, like in gymnastics, everything was strict and Mm. you had to be proper and pretty and all that sort of stuff. And then CrossFit was just like (laughs) flopping around, (laughs) do it as fast as you can go. I was like, okay. (laughs) So I think like it was just more of an exciting way of training. So yeah, it got me hooked straight away. Did you get butterfly pull-ups straight away? No. Oh, really? I swung around for (laughs) six months trying to learn how to butterfly pull-up because I like, no one really taught me that. Like, I just kind of mm. watch people and I was like, oh, that looks easy. And I'd get up and I'd just start swinging back and forth. Yeah, like I was gliding. So, yeah, I was yeah. so used to doing gymnastics swings yeah. that my body didn't really understand how to like undo it. Mm. Um, so it took me a while and I had to break it down um, like day by day and like learn all these different drills and techniques to do. Um, so you taught yourself. But yeah, I, I basically taught myself how to do butterfly pull, uh, all the gymnastics movements, especially because... Mm. At the time, like um, Matt and Nick were really good coaches, but they were boys. And mm. it was really hard for the boys to teach girls how to do things that boys can just do. Yeah. And I think um, <laughs> that's what made me like become really interested in teaching other people how to do um, CrossFit gymnastics. Mm. Because um, a lot of it was girls asking me for tips and stuff because boys don't get it yeah because like it's like it, some some boys are really good coaches but like back yeah. then like it wasn't really an awareness like oh yeah girls just can't do muscle ups mm. and then like all of a sudden like all these girls could like start doing them yeah. and they're like oh shit i probably should learn how to teach them yeah because like boys would just pull themselves up on top on top of the rings yeah. like and they probably badly be, as well yeah like there would yeah. be no technique to it yeah. but <clears throat> it's so long ago right yeah like it, coaching has come so far leaps and bounds since yeah. back then i mean yeah, the 2011 regionals in Sydney, I think there were two girls that got muscle ups in the workouts mm. out of the whole field. And now you go to re- sanctionals now and everyone can do them, yeah. I, I think. I, yeah. There might have been some that struggled a bit this year, but <laughs> anyway. But even like in our own gym, like at CrossFit mm. Curie, we have probably 40% of our girl members that can muscle up. Mm. Like that's a big number. Yeah. Compared to yeah. when, when I started. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it used to be amazing if you had a girl that could do yeah, exactly. big muscle ups. I mean, that is the main reason, that is literally the main reason why our team qualified to the games. We had two girls that could do big muscle ups. Yeah, it's definitely not my skills. (laughs) 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 Um, So did you, uh, and then, so you started CrossFit, went to CrossFit Cronulla. Was it called CrossFit Cronulla? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then did you 
start looking at opening Shara Gymnastics? Or did you take that over from someone else? Yeah, so I was working there from 2007. I was mm. just working um, as a part-time coach. And then eventually I moved into a full-time role. Um, and then the owners kind of approached me one day and said, like, look, we're looking at um, selling. We want to keep the business rolling in good hands. Um, are you interested? And I was... I was really young at the time and yeah. I was like, well, yeah, I got to find some money first though. So, yeah. um, kind of, how did you do that? So <laughs> convinced my mom <laughs> yeah. to help me out a little bit. So, um, like, like I said, she always supported me with, um, everything when I was growing up. So this was kind of like the next step instead of helping me do sport. She helped me start a business. Start a business. So, mm. um, that's awesome. Yeah. So it was about six months after they approached me, um, kind of signed all the papers and <laughs> and how old were you then if i can ask that and yeah. how many girls were at the academy um so i was 24 yep and at the time i had about 16 gymnasts 16 16 wow you got way more now yeah i have about 90 competitive wag gymnasts that's not rec like that's yeah. just the competitive girls yeah but one of the things that amazes me is that you go uh, to all these uh, gymnastic events with X amount of teenage girls, <laughs> like a <laughs> bunch of them. I think you, you told me you went to the Gold Coast and there was 40 girls there or something. I might get that number wrong, but how do, like, how do you do that? How crazy is it? Um, a lot of <laughs> patience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, like I think um, the girls that I do coach at my club, like they're, they've got a good um, grounding, I guess, because I've, I've coached them from young and they've, they're the type of people I want to surround myself with because they spend more time at the gym than they do at home or at school or whatever. Mm. So um, they're always really respectful, kind, good humans. Like yeah. I think. How old are they roughly? Um, the girls, I mean, I have a new squad that I'm coaching now because my girls just retired. Um, oh, yeah. So the girls that I was coaching were my oldest one was um, almost 18 and the youngest one at the time was 15. Yep. So pretty much all of those girls retired bar one. So um, I've moved on to a different squad now and they're uh, eight to 12 years old. Wow. So Yeah, it's a handful. The eight to 12 is harder than the teenage I ones. can imagine. They just, endless stories. Yeah. You're like, try, you're <laughs> trying to explain what you're going to do in the apparatus. And they're like, do you know that my cat? I'm like, <laughs> okay, tell me about your cat. Here we go. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Yeah. Uh, do you have anyone that's really talented there? Or are all of them talented? We have a bunch that are very talented. Mm. I think um, in the sport itself, like it's really hard to go um, all the way. Like everyone has dreams of going to the Olympics mm. and all that sort of stuff, but um, it's an expensive sport. And I think like the area that we're in, we're not extremely wealthy. We're not poor, like it's not a mm. poor area, but to to get your kids to that next level, you need to have a lot of time and money like the parents do. Mm. Um, and the kids need to... Um, obviously be probably homeschooled um, oh, because wow. of, yeah, because of the training. So I think like for what we provide for the kids in the RSA train, they're exceptional for mm. the sport. Um, whereas like the kids that will head up to the Olympics kind of route, don't go to school. They train twice a day, every day. What <laughs> are the thing, biggest so. nations now? Is it China and I mean, America, America yeah. America's Russia? next level. There. Is it, are the Americans better than the Chinese? Yeah. Wow. Well, what I mean, that's it? That is. the Chinese are very um, neat and um, I don't know, like they're just, they're always been good. Like yeah. their, their skills are nice to watch. They're fluent. Their coaches are good. But I think America's just kind of taken that next step and um, are trying all the harder skills. So like the difficulty in their routines is a lot harder. Okay. Um, and so when they perform them well, they end up on top. Mm. Um, whereas like a lot of people, if they try the harder difficulty, but it's not done well, then they end up failing so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so the americans take more risk would you yeah, say yeah, yeah definitely and i think like they're just probably got more um like more coaches that and money more coaches mm. and money that are kind of willing to take more risks and I take a lot of stuff. pride in it i feel like yeah right? definitely the americans are really proud of their gymnastics yeah. gymnastics team whereas yeah. the australians we don't see anything of we, it, really. yeah we don't really like there's not a lot of funding in it in australia so mm. it's not very appealing for a 20 year old who has to decide if they're going to do elite gymnastics or go get a job at Big W. Yeah. Um, they're going to earn more money working at Big W. I <laughs> yeah, kid it's you crazy. not. Yeah. Like there's no money in the sport here. So yeah. I think like unless they're um, 
if unless they got that backing from their parents or they're like extremely passionate, it's really hard. Mm. Cause like even in like the university, we don't have scholarships that take you there. Whereas we have yeah. American universities that'll come and scout some of our gymnasts and give them that opportunity to compete for college goal, gymnastics. Yeah, yeah. Cause so they get on a scholarship in yeah, the States. Yeah. yeah. Which I think like that's a good opportunity for them because we mm. don't really provide that. Like there is gymnastics in universities here, but it's not, it's not the same. <laughs> the same. Yeah, for sure. But it's still an amazing sport to get your kids into though. So, yeah. uh, what are some of the reasons why you would recommend parents to put their kids into it? And is it difficult to get them in? Or let, let's say if there's a parent parent in the Shire that are mm -hmm. listening, uh, what, what, what are some of the steps they sh can take to put their kids into gymnastics? And why would you recommend it? So, um, like you could pretty much start gymnastics if the kids are walking. So, a lot of clubs will have like a... Um, a mum and bubs type of class where like you just kind of guide them around and they mm. basically learn how to like roll and climb and fall and it's more playtime yeah, really. in but like in a safe environment like if you took them to a playground you're like holy shit the ground's made out of <laughs> glass or concrete Whatever, yeah. or something like yeah. it's the parents worst nightmare so like in a gym environment like it's structured play and mm. safe landings and all that sort of stuff so um the age isn't really a factor but i think like for most parents they should try and get their kids in before they go to school because it um it actually helps a lot with like their hand-eye coordination so even though they're walking along a balance beam it will help them when they have to try and figure out how to start handwriting yeah. and all that sort of stuff because even though all those fine motor skills aren't the exact same as what you do it does help and I think there's so many kids now that need like um OT work and all of them recommend gymnastics for a reason mm. like it's um not only like strength and flexibility, but it's like coordination and balance. It's almost exactly what CrossFit does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like agility and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I think um, like from a perspective, from a parent, like that's probably the most well-rounded sport that you could put your kid in um, from a young age. And like it, it, it's going to develop their skills for when they go to soccer or football or tennis or whatever they do. Mm. Gymnastics is going to be kind of like the core. The base. Yeah, the base of every sport that they're going to do. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. There's so many parents at our gym now uh, that are putting their kids in, into gymnastics. And mm. like you said, the skill transfer is so much broader that we think, especially at that age, because what they get is they get, all, <coughs> uh, this is probably bro, bro science and I'm <laughs> going to explain it wrong, but all these neurons in the brain starts to fire that hasn't necessarily been firing before. Mm -hmm. And that can transfer into way different skills than what they do just at the gymnastics gym. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Is it... So what you did when you started as a kid, you went to gymnastics every day of the week pretty much and, you know, trained every evening. If, if a parent look at their kid and it's like, well, we don't have time for that or we don't want them to do it, is that, is that the only option or can they go once a week, twice a week? Is yeah. it smaller so like Yeah. Out of like all of the kids that do gymnastics in our club, it's probably only about 20% that do competitive and 80% do recreational. So they're just there for fun. Mm. And most of those kids do once or twice a week for an hour or two hours. Like, okay. and that's, that's all they really need. And mm. that's what they enjoy. Like they're not there to do things perfectly. They're there to just like learn skills to their potential and mm. whatever's going to help them. So we do get like a lot of dancers that come in and be like, I want to learn how to do a Barani because I need it for dancing. So what's a Barani? <laughs> Um, it's a cartwheel without your hands, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you just flip your legs around. <laughs> yeah. It's not that easy. I can't do that. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not easy, but, um, yeah. So like we get a lot of dancers that'll come in and do that, but like their main issue is that they're not strong enough. Mm. So they've got all this beautiful flexibility and balance and whatever, but their legs are too weak to actually push off the ground. Power off the floor. Yeah. So like they'll come to us and be like, oh, why can't I do this? And then like over like however long they stay for, mm. they develop that, um, power and coordination and strength to be able to perform that skill for dancing. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But like oh. you'll get the same, like kids will come in for rugby and the dad's like, oh, he needs to be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's too small. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like they're obviously doing more like climbing and pull-ups and swinging and all that sort of stuff to help develop yeah. that sort of stuff. So That's awesome. Yeah. It's such a good sport. Like I said before, I, it's the one thing I wish I did when I was a kid is gymnastics. It's <laughs> easy to say when you're an adult, but yeah. Mo most adult CrossFitters say that yeah. now. They're like, man, I wish I did that. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, let's switch gear a little bit again. Let's talk about you and your training because uh, you have done CrossFit for a little while now. And uh, from what I can tell, it seems like your level has gone up a little bit the last couple of years. Have you 
has that been on purpose? Have you changed the structure of your training a bit more or uh, what's kind of your goals and where are you at now? So like originally when I started CrossFit, like I did it for a bit of fun and I was interested and it was making me stronger um, to actually spot my kids at coaching. So I was really just doing it to like maintain my strength so I could help my gymnast. But then um, I like started being competitive in it and <laughs> me being a competitive person, I just wanted to get better. So I actually feel that as I get older, I've been getting better. Like I think mm. um, I'm starting to understand the breakdown of movements more. So when I'm actually doing them myself, I think about how I would teach it. And so yeah. it's making me better at the same time. So I think um, I'm just enjoying the competitive side a bit more rather than just doing it for the fun fitness yeah. side. <laughs> it helps you keep stay motivated maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think because like growing up, I always had goals in my sports and stuff. And then like I had the goal of running my business and making sure that was all going smoothly. And then I kind of got to a point where I was like, hmm, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> Something new. So it just kind of like it all worked in with each other and it does work really well with my job and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So. so how much are you training now and what kind of program or structure are you following? Um, so I just follow class programming. Um, so Mitch does a really good job of um, making sure that the um, members kind of see – where we should be at and then we scale accordingly rather than scaling from the bottom and then mm. the advanced people maybe needing to find something else. Like we don't like that kind of, I don't know, program. Like, yeah, so we kind of start at the top and then scale it down so that um, people can kind of see where they want to go to. And I think um, like it works really well. So I'll do um, five classes a week and then um, some of those days we have like a few cardio classes that I <laughs> die <laughs> miserably in. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll try and do a couple of them a week too. Yeah. And then if Mitch can stand me, he sometimes does some snatch work with me on Wednesdays. So I probably train eight times a week in total Yeah. Um, over like six days. Yeah. So and I guess you've done some team training on the weekends as well. Yeah. Right? So d yeah, if we've got a comp coming up and stuff, like the training will differ a little bit, but mm. like I generally stick to um, classes during the week and then team training on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. What do you feel like is the the one aspect where you need to work the most? Is there something the way you're like trying to put more effort into? Um, I mean, you can always improve on everything. Your strength's always going to increase, all that sort mm. of stuff. But I think for me, um, I'm still not where I want to be, I'll say, in snatching. Um, I just... It's just one of those movements. Well, that Mitch I still proposed anyway, didn't he? He did. So I, I still haven't <laughs> snatched eighty. It's been a long time coming, yeah. but <laughs> I think Mitch was meant to wait till we snatched eighty for the proposal, but yeah. he was very nice. It's almost it happened a couple before. of times, but I just yeah, you're so close, so close. I yeah. just don't know. Like as soon as that bar, like I'm setting up for that bar, I just I can't get it above my head. And there's some I don't know if it's a mental block or what it is, but. I still am struggling with that and it blows my mind because like with like clean and jerks, I'm so confident and I know I can always hit like a hundred and mm. it'll be fine. And then as soon as I try and snatch eight, I'm like, nope. <laughs> What's the heaviest you've snatched? Um, 77 and a half. Okay. So it's the next step up. Yeah. Maybe you've got to go 78, 79. Yeah. <laughs> I would think the pressure would be a bit off now though, that the proposals already <laughs> happened. <laughs> You didn't have to stress so much about no, it. No, didn't help at <laughs> all. <laughs> it's so funny how a kilo can make a big difference in that yeah. lift. Yeah. yeah, it's the same. I, I, I know I think people that have done all the lifting or CrossFit for a while, they all yeah. can, yeah, they're very familiar with that position. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I think like for me, like snatching is probably like the main thing. I'm not a very good runner, like at all. <laughs> like I struggle so hard. How did you go on that down under uh, CrossFit champ sand run? Oh, that was run? actually great because I got to swim in between. Oh, yeah. So like the it was like 500 meters or something in the first run and I ended up entering the water maybe like 80th out of everyone and I came out of the water third. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> so I got to wait a while for my teammates to come back. So you got some rest? Yeah, I got some rest before I had to run back. So yeah. And then you all had to run bad. together? Yeah, like you week? had to hold on to a rope and run together. So mm. It was the slowest runner out of the four of you? Trent. Oh, really? <laughs> he had a massive leg cramp, so oh. he was making noises that a man shouldn't make. It was so <laughs> funny. It's such a horrible event because it's perfectly fine for everyone else except for the slowest runner yeah. if you're the slowest runner you're just having a he's also the slowest time. swimmer too so oh. he was having a real hard time i yeah. think um the fear of swimming with that many people it's so frightening that your heart rate spikes without even having to do the swim like you're Couldn't just sitting there more. being like oh my god mm. like 
people were swimming over everyone. It was like, it was scary. Mm. But I think like for- Did you have clear water? Um, well, well, you entered not really. And yeah, so, third, so everyone you... was kind of like bunching. So I swam around the outside of everyone. Yeah. I went like as wide as I could. So I didn't really get stuck in that because mm. that freaks me out. <laughs> yeah. And I'm a strong swimmer and it freaks me out. So yeah. like some of those people, like they're not swimmers. And I think that's Yeah. I've talked, uh, we, we've talked about that on the, um, the last couple of podcasts because mm. I had uh, uh, Kendrick on. Mm. Um, he's a surf Ironman. And his story about, getting when he was younger or younger in the field of athletes that he competed against he had someone just push him in the back push him in the head and then before he knew it he's underwater and there's people swimming over him he looks up and there's just people can't kicking so you yeah. can't even get up you get out of that you're so out of breath mm -hmm. and then you're going to try and compete again yeah. yeah it's way way different than people think yeah i hear so many people say oh i could easily do that swim you could easily do it on a cruise a day with just you swimming yeah but put people in there and put the timer on, it's a different, completely different yeah. race. And then yeah. like there was um, like the tides going in mm. and out, up and down all day. So you didn't know what you were going to get. And then um, like the current was going one way. So mm. you'd try and swim to the right and you'd end up all the way on the left. You're like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was interesting because it wasn't a big swell, but there were you guys had some swell in the water and you had a bit of a shore break. So yeah. it wasn't as easy as people think. No, And especially yeah. like if not so much for... Um, myself but one of our team members Kayla she's Canadian and <laughs> she was like how do I get over the waves I was like what do you mean <laughs> <laughs> she because like where she lives she doesn't yeah. have waves that break like she break, basically lives in a lake yeah um so for her like that was probably this frightening thing <laughs> yeah. she was actually when she was coming in she kept swimming back Oh, to not get, to not get mm. the wave. And she was like, I couldn't get in because the waves <laughs> kept breaking. I was like, oh my gosh. I see that all the time in yeah. the surf. People are worried about getting in with a board and then they yeah. stop coming back out. <laughs> That's funny. I love the ocean. It's so good. It gives yeah. you some, uh, yeah, some good stories mm. there. Uh, well, now that we're on the Down Under CrossFit Champ and Ship event, I always like to ask, how did you go with the clean and jerk? Um, it was okay. I think like, because... For the team event, like you both had to lift within the minute. So we couldn't go to... Both girls. Both girls. Yeah, sorry. Mm. Um, so same barbell um, and you only had the minute to both achieve your lift. So there wasn't much time in between if you wanted to kind of change the weights and stuff around. So um, Kayla and I kind of pick weights that we were both um, going to know that we were going to okay. hit. And then if we had extra time, then we're going to change it. So I think I ended up doing maybe 94. It was in pounds, so I don't yeah. know what it ended up being. 210? Yeah, it was something like that. Um, so I think I ended up doing something around there. And then um, Kayla was maybe like five pounds lighter. Okay. So you didn't <laughs> So you didn't lift the same weight in the minute? We changed? We did for the first three, but then she yeah. missed the last one. So she stripped the weight off. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fun event lifting down there? Yeah. Yeah. I like lifting under pressure. <laughs> yeah. It's Makes so you try good. a bit harder. <laughs> I wish they put that... Lifting event on another day yeah, when so the stadium I. would have been yeah. fuller. Because it was pretty quiet on Friday, yeah? It's a pretty nerve-wracking event to go out as your first event too. Like, mm. you're already nervous. Like, you don't want to be, like, wobbling around under a barbell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The best event we've had for the nerves like that was a 3RM clean and jerk. Because mm. I think people get very confident in the gym, in their own environments, and with equipment they're used to, floor they're used to. Yeah. And that year we did it, they had... A, um, a separate platform for each team and it was slightly elevated off the off the floor but then the matting didn't fit properly so the matting actually moved moving. around a little bit yeah and then people were so nervous that to clean and jerk it put it overhead and then they already started shaking on rep <laughs> rep number one they got two more reps there was so many failed reps <laughs> that year it was crazy it's like shaking like a leaf yeah yeah uh did you have any other good events down there that you enjoyed um I mean, all the worm events suck, so I'm not going to say that was good. Um, <laughs> Main reason why I retired. <laughs> the worm. Worst. <laughs> um, I think, like, the there was a workout that had, like, muscle-ups in it that you had to get 40 done, synchro as a team. Like, that was probably mm. the most fun event because um, everyone from our gym is, like, well, in my team, sorry, is quite good at gymnastics. So, like, it was actually enjoyable. Like, you weren't suffering through it. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah this is fun. Um and I think like the, there's a rope climb event too. That was pretty good. Rope climb toe to bar. Yeah. So obviously more gymnastics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as long as you're in the air, basically. Yeah. You're yeah, it. yeah. Basically. But what yeah. is it like down there being an athlete and behind the scenes and everything? What's the setup um, like and the athletes around you? 
it depends on how much of a fan you are of FIFA, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, obviously, um, like, there's a lot of big names down there. So, if you haven't met mm. them before, like, for those people, they're just kind of like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and there's so many athletes this so year. So many, yeah. Like, because yeah. there was the 80 individuals for female and male, as mm. well as all of the team athletes. There's there was 60 teams? No, there was 40. 40 teams. Yeah. So, um, there was so many people down there. But I think, um, yeah, like, for like the first time is there, it would have been an awesome kind mm. of experience for them, especially because like regionals wasn't regionals this year, but they kind mm. of ran it almost better than what regionals had been in the past anyway. So it still yeah. had like the athlete um, hangout area. Um, the warm up area was better than what it's ever been at regionals. Really? And yeah. It was, it, the setup was way better. Yeah. So How was the warm up area better? What was the difference? You think? Um, just more equipment. It was safer. Like they really like laid out flatter ground, flat ground. Like, <laughs> yeah, like at the back of Wollongong stadium, it has that, that slope in it mm. that we had to warm up for that weightlifting event and they made it all level. And oh, awesome. the equipment was good. Like usually they give you like all the shit barbells and stuff to use, but they had like all the equipment was really good. Mm. So It's fun being down there warming up, isn't it? I always enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. Chatting with other athletes yeah. and talking shit. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Well, yeah. And, but the funny thing is too, though, like sometimes you forget that you're not actually friends with people. You just stalk them on Instagram every day. <laughs> and like you, th- you go to have a conversation with them and you're like, I don't actually know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you, did you have that situation with someone? Um, I mean, I do it a lot anyway, but <laughs> 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 I just talk to whoever. I don't really care. A good example. Um, You'd know a lot of those people. Yeah, right? I know a lot of them, but. I don't know. I just have a massive girl crush on Harriet. So Harriet Roberts. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. Every time I see her, I'm like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. Um, talking about the regionals or sanctionals field, I'm, I'm probably just going to use the word regionals mm-hmm. to make it confusing. But um, do you feel like the level has gone up or down now in the female field? Because we've lost Tia and Cara from our uh, competitions. Um, I think it's probably like over the 80, like obviously there's some girls in there that are still like working on weaknesses and all that sort of stuff. But I think just like the top level of competitive female athletes have gone team anyway. So Mm. not only have we lost Tia and Cara this year, like a lot of them were in team. So the Mm. actual individual, yeah, exactly. So a lot of the actual individuals that were there, um, like they're still great athletes, but I wouldn't say like they would be games Mm. athletes, um, who else, like Courtney Haley and all them, were they there? They didn't Courtney was there. She she already has a ticket. She already had a ticket, yeah. Um, yeah. Who so, like, else? there was probably... Alethea, obviously, yeah, got okay. an invite. So good. Yeah. She did, she declined her invite, though. Yeah, she's got Masters. Yeah. She's old like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so I think um, for... Like the level that was there, like, obviously, there's some people that have really good strengths. Like, there were some girls that were cleaning, jerking, like... 105 kilos, yeah. 110. And I was like, wow, like that's amazing. Yeah, Kate in the in Rob's team. Yeah. Uh, so good. Crazy. Yeah. So strong. Megan Signal. Yeah. I think 210 as well, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Crazy. So there was, yeah, there's quite a lot of girls that were pretty strong. And then it would come down to um, a strict handstand push up workout. Mm. And a lot of them were failing. Yeah. Reps. And it's so like, I think like there's not a lot of girls that are hitting like a hundred percent of everything. Like they've kind of got like eighty percent of thing, yeah, eighty percent of things kind of working for them, and twenty percent that's not there yet. But also maybe the fact that like a lot of them don't have like kind of like that that switch, yeah. I guess. Like you know, when you watch T work out, like it's not, it doesn't look hard. Mm. Like she's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna go whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah. And like she'd be hurting so much on the inside, but you couldn't tell. Yeah. Whereas like somebody's goes like, I just got to take a spell for a second. Yeah. Where's the chalk bucket? Yeah. Hopefully it's on the other side. Not that I could talk. That's my favorite place to hang out is the chalk bucket. So. Yeah. <laughs> Does it, um, do you, f- uh, when you watch it, do you feel like oh, I should, ha- I should have a crack at individual? <laughs> I have a lot of people telling me I should. I yeah, think but what do you think? Some night, like it's always easy to say, oh, I could do better than that. Like when you're watching them, but when mm. you're actually down there competing, like, I feel that way in a class sometimes. I'm like, oh, how's that person beating me? Mm. But then I'm like, oh, yeah, I suck. <laughs> 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 I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. So it depends on, like, obviously, like, certain workouts and how your training and stuff is going. But I do think that, like, doing individual would be, like, a good experience. But mm. I love being on the floor with other people and um, kind of, like, I don't know, sharing the pain, I guess. Mm. But um, I think, too, for the fact that, 
um, like when we first started CrossFit Kiriwi to get teams across, like you needed certain scores. Like it wasn't like where you placed mm. in the open. It was like your scores combined. Yeah. Um, that's, that's and CK. so, yeah, yeah. And so like if I went individual some of those years, our <coughs> team wouldn't have made it. Mm. Um, so I think for me too, like it was always the fact of I did it for the team as opposed to like focusing on myself. Mm. Um, but I don't know. Maybe I'll try individual. <laughs> Before you retire? Maybe. I probably I'm not gonna retire. <laughs> <laughs> Never? <laughs> no. I enjoy it too much. Yeah. How long and have I mean, you done CrossFit now? Uh almost seven years. Yeah, six wow. years maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I think like because it's it's maintainable with my lifestyle. I enjoy the training. I'm not injured. Mm. I'm just gonna knock on the table <laughs> really quick. You're over the hump. The f- the five year hump I reckon is yeah. uh is the toughest to get over for a lot of people. Yeah. You're well over it. Because you're you're progressing upwards now right and a lot of people plateau hard at five years and or they get injured and then suddenly they're like why am i doing this yeah yeah i think too like being um like getting injured and stuff within crossfit is just from people overtraining because they're trying to achieve all the goals at once type thing and i think like that's Mm. the main issue whereas i don't like overtraining as it is so (laughs) Couldn't what? agree more. Yeah, one class a day is great. Let's go move on. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many things to cover, right? And then people do look exactly like what you said. People sit in the stands at regionals or sanctionals and they're like, oh, I can do that. And then they go and train and they get slapped a little bit in the face because they realize this is hard work and there's a lot of skills and abilities to cover. And then they try and get it all done and then they get injured. It's, yeah. uh, I've, I mean, there's countless of those stories. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not that easy. For sure. Yeah. You need a few years behind you. Yeah. And I think yeah. like also too, like a lot of people that they're watching have backgrounds in sport that has kind of like brought them to where they are. Like they didn't mm. become that way just from doing CrossFit. Yeah. Like there's maybe like 2% of the people that are down in the regionals for that didn't really do a competitive mm. high level sport. Like a lot of them have come from a background where their bodies were already kind of yeah. like conditioned or trying to think who that would be you because you're right yeah like uh, most people have come from yeah some sort of other sport that they've done like through to like yeah. their you're late a perfect teens. example <laughs> gymnastics <laughs> and swimming yeah. yeah so i think like for people that have just kind of joined the gym and didn't do anything really too exciting their whole life to expect that they can get to that point in mm. a short amount of time is unachievable which is why like they always end up injured yeah never touch the barbell and then suddenly they're gonna jump on yeah some squatting program <laughs> means you got to squat every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Switching kind of topic again. Uh, Cause you said you do follow some Instagrammers on uh, some CrossFitters on Instagram. And I think you have had a little think about whether or not you want to put your Instagram on private or maybe cut that down a little bit. Cause you have a, a fair amount of followers, but what are you at now? I don't even I know. I did. <laughs> oh, you did? I've called them all now. So. Yeah. I think I was. What were we at at your peak of Instagram? I think I was like <laughs> seventeen and a half thousand. Seventeen thousand, so. yeah. And then how many did you call? I now have eight hundred and something. Followers. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. How how it's long did that take painful. to delete all of them? <laughs> it took me about four days. Oh my. Like my issue was, I was going to start a new page, um, and just tell people to follow me. But the issue was, is that I liked all my old photos and I wanted to keep them. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to like screenshot them and whatever. So I like I just kept that account. Um, but yeah. also I didn't want to have to re-find everyone that I follow as well. So I just clicked <laughs> delete, accept, delete, accept oh for four days to get rid of it. Yeah, That is a lot. So from 17,000 to 800. Yeah. So basically. You could have almost yeah. sold that account. I could have, but that's exactly what I didn't want mm. to do anymore. Like I was sick of selling other people's products and kind of like living in this world where that's like you're, you're, you're trying to show your happiness and success to people you don't even know. Mm. And I think like for me, like that's not what I wanted. Oh, it's not what I want anymore. Mm. Um, like when I was growing up and I was like, oh, that's sick. Like I got all these people following me. And then I was like, I don't know any of these people. Why am I trying to prove that I'm really good at doing something or I'm really happy or I'm the prettiest at this or like all those type of things. So mm. I kind of like hit a point um, where I was just got sick of it. And <laughs> That's so good. That's, that's awesome. I think that's that's great because we, I do feel now that we're in, at a little bit of a tipping point where a lot of uh, people are a bit over social media. Like yeah. people are more critical to Facebook and how they operate and 
people realize that Instagram doesn't really make you happy at all if in fact if you put too much emphasis on it it can damage your, yeah, your mental health oh i think too like because i have like a lot of teenage girls that look up to me as a role model being their coach um and i think if they're seeing me posting photos for someone else mm. um it's going to make it okay for them and a lot of the time if you're influencing a younger market they're going to follow you mm. And they're going to want to be like you. And I just, I didn't like how that was kind of coming across, even though like yeah. I wasn't posting like anything provocative or anything like that, but it was just more the fact of like, I was doing things for other people as opposed to for myself. Yeah. And I just, I don't know, it wasn't enjoyable. And I like, I think Instagram's a good marketing thing for like businesses. And I think like, like CrossFit Curie, we get, we don't advertise on anything. We just use our Instagram page and show everyone kind of like what we're doing in the gym each day. And I think like that's kind of a cool tool for people to have a look at. But for mm. personal use, I don't think it's really necessary yeah, to a, have that many followers. And <laughs> It's a good point with the girls that you coach at uh, Shire Gymnastics though, because if they look at your account and you have 17,000 followers and you get X amount of likes for this photo and et cetera, that, and they think that that's success. That's, yeah. They think that's, that's important. They, yeah. But it's not. 100%, it's not. Yeah. And I think like it's hard enough for them as it is like when I was 17, it sucked <laughs> like trying to impress people in person, let alone online. Mm. And I think like what they think they have to do to get a people to get people's approval and stuff is not appropriate. And it's not, it's not going to make you a better person. Definitely not. So if anything, almost worse because you're spending 100%. more time on, yeah, on your phone and just spending the time figuring out what to write on your photo. Yeah. I, like that. I just yeah. hate that. <laughs> it takes too much time. Now I just put an emoji or like one word. I'm like, yep, <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. It's, it's, yeah. It's, if I, sometimes I catch myself, like if I try to post something and then I always struggle with the caption of what to write. And then I realize after a little while, I'm like, Fuck, I've been thinking about this caption for five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> it's just a waste of time. At the end of the day, no one really cares, I think. So, no. Yeah. Uh, but with the ones that you follow, though, are there someone that you enjoy following for a certain reason or like someone that you find some inspiration from? Because there's good things as well yeah. through uh, social media. Yeah. So like I love Jamie Green. She's, yep. I don't know, like she's so strong. Yeah. She's shredded. She, she trains like yeah. well, she's, I don't know. She's just a good athlete. I think, um, I like Alison Scuds. Yeah. Um, she meant to compete at our reach. I thought she was coming here, but then Jamie Green did. Yeah. Alison Scuds, I'm not, not sure. No. I think she went to the Brazil yeah. event. Yeah. 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 Jamie Green attacked all of those events. Holy moly. Yeah. She was amazing to watch, uh, at our sanctionals because she used to compete at our region. Yeah. And back then I've. She wasn't at the level where she's at now. And I think that that's why I like her is because like, yeah. she kind of started where I started and it's like, it's just good to see where she's at and that she's still going, I think. Yeah. So. yeah. She had a good battle with uh, Amanda Barnard. I thought that was, yeah. yeah, they were pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Pretty impressive actually that Amanda uh, won it in the end. But I think the difference was the swim and the clean and jerk. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Amanda's obviously a good swimmer and a strong girl. Yeah. So Cool. All right. Um, so some questions to kind of wrap it up a little bit. Um, might be some tricky ones. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> so with the um, athletic endeavors that you've had, what are some of the failure, failures that you've had throughout your career and that have been kind of your favorite failures in hindsight and what have you learned from them? Um, oh, that's tricky. I think... Um, for me, like the biggest failures is when I have let someone down, I guess. So in say like a swimming competition, I can't like pinpoint an exact time, but say if your coach kind of went out knowing that you should win this event and you've stuffed something up, like you false started and got disqualified or... Have you done that? I've done that so many times. Oh. So many times. It's unbelievable. <laughs> How does that work? Is it If you go before start? the beat, yep, you're out. But, and no restart? No. Oh. Well, like it will restart for everyone else but you. But you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and how does the actual start work? Is it just ready and then just quiet and then a, a, a gun or is yeah. it? Yeah, it'll be like, take your marks and it's like beep. And every time I was like, nah, too excited. <laughs> or so you started before or, the beep. Yeah, or I'd yeah. just be like out of balance and fall off. Cause like you're, <laughs> you're standing on like Are you leaning the forward? swimming blocks and you're like, I'm going to fall. 
<laughs> and then you're like, oh, I'm in the water. <laughs> That's a bad race. Yeah. <laughs> Just so, leaning too far forward. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, like in those points, like that's kind of where mm. that was a pretty big failure for me. Like, and I mean, like anytime in gymnastics, if you ever fell off the apparatus or anything like that, like there was nothing that was ever exceptionally like, oh my God, I really failed and mm. I'm disappointed with myself. I think um, everything that I ever kind of made a mistake on, I learned from and that yeah. made me a better athlete for the next time. But um, yeah, there's nothing I can really pinpoint that was yeah. like. Don't lean too far forward. Don't. You start <laughs> focus on like the left. <laughs> You'll oh, see it now. Yeah. Watch the swimming race. So many people are like, Ugh. I, I think I might have seen that at the Olympics. That's yeah. why, I, yeah, I, I'm trying to recall some some of the swims that I've it's watched. It's devastating because yeah. like you haven't even started and yeah. you've already been like kicked out. You're like, oh, <laughs> okay. Because I think at track and field, they get a second chance, yeah. right? Yeah. Why don't they get that at swimming? I'm not sure. It's a bit harsh. Yeah. Maybe maybe they've changed their rules. Maybe they're nice because now they give ribbons to everyone for yeah. participating and <laughs> all that sort of yeah. crap. <laughs> Did you get a ribbon at, in Wollongong? Did you get anything down there? I can't even remember. <laughs> Reebok t-shirt? No. No, no Reebok t-shirt this no. year. I can't even think. Did we get anything? I don't think we did. <laughs> well, well, I mean, it really doesn't matter. I don't know. That's I, not I, why I'd rather, you do it. Yeah, I'd rather not get anything than a shirt that did I'm not going to wear. Did you compete that year? We got that bright yellow yeah. skivvy <laughs> or whatever it the was. The shirt? Yeah, it yeah, was so bad. So bad. <laughs> I, and no one wears them anymore. No. I think it, they might as well. One year that. we got Reebok um, Nanos. At regionals? Yeah. I didn't compete that year. Ooh, that was a good uh, year. <laughs> what what number of nanos? Oh, it would have been like two or three. Oh, early. Yeah. Shit, the twos were all right, I think. I can't remember. Mm. What shoes do you train in now? Uh, I usually wear stripe movement. How about Noble? Have you I'm switched? wearing them right now, well, that's actually. That's what I'm asking, Look, yeah. I don't train in them. They're too clean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're still white. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I only wear white shoes, so <laughs> they have to get to a point where they're dirty enough to train in. Ah, so you will eventually train in those yeah. white Nobles. And then I'll buy a new pair to wear publicly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not training. Yeah. Um, do you have a... Uh, do you have a current habit that you're trying to change or something that you would like to change or work on? The two biggest things that I struggle with changing the most is that I eat dessert every night. I could do not every like night, every night. What do you have? Uh, Maxi buns. <laughs> so good. Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> Messina. <laughs> so ice cream. Yeah. Ice cream. And like we have uh, the M&M crispy block. Like it's a block of chocolate. That's, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, another one. so good. <laughs> That's, anyway, that is a lot so of sugar. that's my issue. I mean, I don't eat all of that at once, but that's probably like the biggest thing. Like well, everything else I eat pretty healthy. Like I'll have um, a pretty decent breakfast, lunch and dinner, mm. but every night I eat dessert and I can't break the habit. Like I just, I'm a horrible person if I don't eat dessert. Do you want to try and break that habit? I've tried before and I was just a bitch. Ask Mitch, he'll tell you. <laughs> but I was, I was just going to say the only person you're... Uh, <clears throat> self-proclaimed bitch do is Mitch <laughs> and maybe Roxy and Roxy because it's so late in the day right you're probably yeah. not going to see anyone else yeah but <laughs> then I but then I wake myself up in the middle of the night because I'm craving something oh like I want God. sugar and I'm like nah I gotta go eat it so you're a sugar I, addict just at night I don't know why <laughs> who cooks dinner at home Mitch <laughs> always yeah wow I mean, generally I get home after him anyway, but I also just can't cook. The only thing I can cook is tacos. And I only learned how to do that a couple of weeks ago. That's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe that could be a thing that will break the habit though. Because I feel like sometimes when you do the cooking, of the, when you cook dinner, I don't have those cravings. He still reason. eats the ice cream though. Because yeah, it's there, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> he never used to eat dessert until he met me, so... Oh, that, I've heard that story a lot yeah. before with guys. It's yeah. pretty common. <laughs> um, the other thing that I have a problem with is like I don't drink enough water. So I don't even know how long we've been sitting here. There's been mm. a bottle of water next to me. I haven't even touched yeah. it. I just, I struggle to drink water. Even though I'd be thirsty, but I'll be like, oh, look, a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That'll dehydrate you instead yeah. of hydrate. There's water in coffee. <laughs> mm. You'll have to, uh, well, you already have a water bottle with you. But you've drank, you've had some of it. It's yeah, almost empty. Mitch and I had that on the way together, oh, wow. so he probably drank most of that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I don't have any tips on it except keep a water bottle with you. Yeah. I try. <laughs> How many liters do you drink a day, do you reckon? Less than like half a Like that bottle? <laughs> wow, yeah, that's not a lot, especially with the amount of training you do. Yeah. I think like that's the, the only time that I really will drink a lot of water is as soon as I finish a workout, mm. I'll like have like half a bottle and then that's it. Yeah, that's not a lot. No. Maybe have a little bit before as well. Or 
No, nah, not even. Okay, here's a trick. <laughs> Have a glass of water early in the morning, like straight away. Because you wake up dehydrated. Yeah. So maybe first thing I stole a coffee. (laughs) (laughs) That's the first thing. That is health right there. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yeah, I I, I didn't used to drink too much water either, but I I started drinking in the morning, and that it does make me feel better. Yeah. Even before coffee or anything, I'll just have some water. I'll try that. (laughs) Um, Do you have anything coming up? Any events that you're planning to do on the calendar or uh, anything exciting? Uh, Yes, I just did the um, Masters HQ, don't laugh, (laughs) 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 Um, online qualifier. So I've got the semifinals in July for that. And where is that? That's going to be at Norwest. Yeah, out of Dural. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Out west. Out west, (laughs) yeah. Out that way. Past Um, the mountains. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And then um, we've got kind of like a fun team comp coming up. It'll be um, in August in Wollongong um, before Kayla goes home. So Kayla's visa's up in August. Yeah. So we're doing one last comp before she What's that called? Is that on in the gong? On in the gong, yeah. Okay. So that's just like a pretty fun comp Mm. for that. Um, And then the Open will be coming up again soon, I guess. So that'll be the next one. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Will you go team again in that Open or is that too early to answer? Um. It depends on how my training's going, I guess. But also I think because this time of year probably works better with my work, like with my gymnasts and stuff, that I actually have more time to focus on my own training rather than when it was previously in um, April and May. Well, sorry, the Open was even earlier. But um, mm. that was when like my girls' main peak season was for all their competitions and state and nationals and stuff. So mm. they they were kind of like my main focus. So that's always another reason why I went team because I couldn't really – um, put too much time into individual. Mm. Um, so I don't know. We'll see what the result is and then make a decision. <laughs> we'll find out later in the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, either way, um, best of luck in all the comps that you got coming, uh, coming up and, uh, we'll have to do this again another time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs>